Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we're going to be looking at Friedrich Nietzsche's ideas around morality. Interesting. Nietzsche was fundamentally an amoralist. With his belief that God was dead, so too was any objective moral truth or value. However, as an amoralist, he was able to step outside of the sphere of morality and look at how this projected onto our society. I see. For Nietzsche, the world was divided into two realms. You had the masters and the slaves. The masters were the minority group, a small amount of individuals who were the wealthy, the powerful, the nobles, as Nietzsche referred to them. The ones leading the top lives and the ones who could do whatever they wanted. This group followed master morality. Now, master morality saw good and bad as whatever consequence benefited them or hindered them. What was good was what made them stronger, wealthier, and of course more powerful. And what was bad was any consequence that reduced this. So master morality was consequential. The only concern was furthering the desire, reaching higher status and working towards the goals of the masters. So, for master morality, what was truly valued were things like glory, ambition, power, wealth, artistic creativity, strength and courage. Yes, I understand. On the other hand, you had the majority of people. These Nietzsche referred to as the herd. They were not masters, they did not have power or wealth or strength, but were in fact oppressed by the masters. They are the slaves. Right. The slaves are not able to attain the status, wealth and power of the masters, and because of this, envy would consume them. They want what the masters have, but they cannot achieve this. They are weak, they are cowards, they are not noblemen. However, over time, the herd will eventually have a moral revolt in order to deal with the tough lives they lead and their inability to get what they want. Instead of valuing what they want but cannot have, they begin to denigrate it. They devalue master morality and they turn what they do have into a virtue. This is slave morality. A new form of good and evil is now created. So having riches now becomes greed, a vice. Being poor and having very little is now humility, a virtue. Wanting glory and fame is now narcissism and self-adoration, a vice. Being oppressed means being obedient, a virtue. Not having sex meant purity, another virtue. And being strong and taking what you want means having wrath and violence, a vice. But being weak, unable to take revenge, meant you were being forgiving, a virtue. And ultimately, if the slave cannot have power, then no one can, and so taking away the master's wealth, power and status was now the ultimate virtue of equality. Very interesting. Nietzsche saw that ancient Greek and Roman mythology followed master morality, as the mythological stories were a praise of the strong and the powerful, whereas Christianity was the pinnacle of slave morality. The teachings of Jesus was for the oppressed, the downtrodden, the weak, the herd. It was centred around all humans being the same in the eyes of God, turning the other cheek, being friendly to your neighbour and practising forgiveness. However, at the same time, horrible stories about hell and eternal suffering scared people into following slave morality and making sure it becomes the dominant moral code. Okay. Nietzsche saw that over time the weak majority do end up taking control of the powerful minority. And as Christianity spread across the Western world, the masters were now subject to slave morality, and the desire for strength and power could be suppressed. Slave morality is there to deny everyone what they truly want, the will to power. Very interesting. I see a lot of truth to Nietzsche's observations on morality, and he has characterised them in a brilliant way. However, there is a certain issue I would like to raise. What's that? I think Nietzsche is committing a black or white fallacy here. This is the fallacy one makes in an argument where everything is either black or white, it is either one way or another, 
there is no room for grey areas, no middle ground and no nuance. I'm familiar with the fallacy but how does this relate to Nietzsche's theory of morality? Because it is a black or white theory, it is either slave morality or master morality and nothing in between, when even the slightest bit of investigation will show you that it is not that straightforward and that easy. There are perhaps many rich, strong, powerful men who consider themselves Christian. There are many people who value wealth, strength and nobility, yet they each practice forgiveness, they give to the poor, they practice monogamy or even celibacy. They are in positions of power and they are trying to increase this, so they practice master morality, yet they value duty, humility and forgiveness, all characteristics of slave morality. Not each action they take is aiming at the consequence of furthering the will to power. Hmm, I see. So morality is not black or white, there is an in-between. Life is not simply made up of masters and slaves. There is more to morality than just master morality or slave morality. I would suggest maybe the highest moral value is walking in between the two, being both a slave and a master, both ambitious and humble. Maybe the highest virtue one can aim for is furthering your own desire and your own will to power, but making everyone else's life better along the way. Very interesting point. But that's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe. And please let us know what you think about Nietzsche's ideas on morality in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Take care and we look forward to seeing you all soon.